Make you feel uncomfortable. Don't don't worry about it. Uh, Bruce will get you through it. Okay. And uh, he's a bit of a pyromaniac. I, a lot of people don't know that about Bruce, but his nickname is Sparky. Um, yeah. uh, Bruce is actually knows a lot about biochar. He was actually a coal miner back in the 1840s, and then when he decided to give that up, he went and he became a veteran because he taught high school biology and science. So therefore, he's a combat vet. And, uh, <laughs> so, Bruce, um, just to spare the audience, I'm going to give you the microphone now so that you can start, and I'll let you demonstrate. You can start right there. Thanks. Thanks. Well, good morning. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, long story short, school teacher, horseman. I'm a farmer now, so. Uh, but I do have a couple of disclaimers. Is this... Is this working okay? Yes, sir. I got new hearing aids. I have no clue sometimes what's going on because one will kick in, the other will kick out, you know, and it, it sounds like stuff's in the middle of my head and it's only on one side, so I'm trying to get used to these things. So a couple of disclaimers. Uh, I am going to use some language that may some people may not like. It may be offensive tend to use the S word quite a bit in this presentation, and I apologize up front for that. I just can't give this presentation without using that, that word, and that word is science. <laughs> okay, two chuckles, that's pretty good. I got another one that's coming in just a minute. So, you know, science has gotten a bad rap here in the last little while, and but there really is a real, a real thing called science, and it's, it, it, it actually functions correctly if the government's not fooling with it or, you know, somebody that's supposed to be a scientist. Um, and I'm not going to hear me say, follow the science. That, that's not going to be in this presentation, although I do feel like there's some science that, that you can follow, but not this kind that we heard about in recent years. So that is, uh, that's the first disclaimer. The second disclaimer has to do with safety. And, you know, when, you, when you're talking around fire and that sort of thing, you've got to, oh, safety. safety. Thank, you, thank you very much. <laughs> that's our fire extinguishing in case things get out of control right here on the table. So, in, the, in the, in talking about safety, doing charcoal, making charcoal, I have some strong recommendations. And one of those recommendations is you don't do it naked. And if you're afraid, uh, just have somebody with you. So you can, you can get that reference. Uh, right down here, I am making charcoal. I started this fire just a little bit before we got started. There's a little alcohol burner under here with a flame and inside is different types of organic there's some cotton in there there's some thread there's some wood i think there's a piece of a chicken bone in there anyway these are the ones that i've made before it takes about 45 minutes for this to com get completely done you may smell it here in a minute and after a while you'll see there's a little hole here on the top you'll see it kind of coming through so uh, if you can't see it, I can kind of explain as we go the, the different, uh, the different, it should start smoking here in a minute, then it'll stop smoking and then I'm going to quench it and I'll show you what happened just in the time frame that we're talking about right here. So charcoal, charcoal is not biochar, but all biochar is made out of charcoal. So you can have lots of charcoal, probably have some around your place, one type or another. You can go down to the store and get it if you want to. But if you want to make some, it's extremely easy. Any, anybody with a match can make charcoal. So it's just organic material. You say, well, what kind of organic material? You name it. I've seen 
charcoal made out of bones. I have a half barrel. One time I had a chicken die the same day I was making charcoal. I got about halfway full of embers and I threw that chicken down in there and just kept making charcoal. And at the end of the day, that chicken was charcoal. I'm gonna hold chicken. Um, so anything that you can put in there that's clean and organic material will turn to charcoal. In my case, most of the time I use wood. Uh, if I find an occasional dead cow, or I'll, I'll gather up some of those bones, and bone makes really good uh, charcoal. So that's what it basically is. And the process that we have, and there's a many different types and kinds of ways to make this as there is people in here. But the process is called pyrolysis, and it is, it is baking, for lack of a better word, baking the, baking the organic parts out of whatever's in there without oxygen. And that's the key. If you have oxygen, your material is gonna continue to burn. And when anything continues to burn, it eventually turns into ash. Not that ash is not, doesn't have some benefits, but charcoal is where you want to where you want to go. So we, we call it a burn, and we burn in a low or no oxygen. It doesn't have to be absolutely sealed up, but it needs to be where the oxygen is not flowing through that. And so it can be any or organic matter. Where would you use it? Well, the obvious thing is that we put it in our gardens. I put mine in my compost pile first. Uh, anybody not have chickens? No count of animals? Okay, well, <laughs> most people do. Have a so, Pomeranian. Put it in your chicken coop. Throw it down there on the, in the, in with the litter. Put it in your horse stall. Down there in the center, where mostly it's the lowest part, Bill put some charcoal down in there. It's already being it's already being worked on uh, by the urine and the manure in your stall. You clean the stall out. You take the charcoal with you. Same thing. I have seen the only animal barnyard farm animal that I have not seen eating charcoal is a horse. Sheep, hogs, chickens, you name it, they'll all eat it. So what happens with that? it never does really break down in their system. But as it passes through the microorganisms within their digestive system, get into that charcoal and it begins to inoculate it. And that's what we call the process after the charcoal is made because it will absorb. And what you don't want to do is have it throw it in your garden uninoculated and have it absorb whatever good microbes and good soil substances that you have in your in your garden you want to that you want it to be an additive okay so people use it in their compost toilets they use it to filter water it's got uh, properties for, uh, for being put in, the, in your feed the, uh, there's a fellow up in Michigan uh, Jim Baker, Baker's Green Acres, anybody familiar with him? Uh, very knowledgeable. He was working with the University of Michigan until he got to realizing that the coccidiosis that was on his farm could be controlled by feeding pelletized and ground up charcoal. And suddenly they decided that they didn't want to work with him anymore because he wasn't using the the coccidiosis chemicals and drenches that, that, the, that the university was in, in league with to, uh, you know, to work on their, on their coccidiosis. <laughs> so anyway, that's, that's kind of how that goes. So uh, depending on how you 
And if you've got a question as we go through this, don't don't hesitate because I'm I'll, I'll, I can stop anytime. I got I got some notes down here that I can ignore if I if I need to. So don't let me don't let me keep going past something that you'd like to know about. Um, if you want to, the material that I use ends up being about the size of a golf ball when it's finished. I get it from a place that makes baseball bats and it's uh, kiln dry, it's super nice material, it's clean, there's not a lot of junk on it and they give it away. So that's what I use and it's, it's hard rock maple. So that's a little bit big. And you can see now that this is starting to smoke. Can y'all see that smoke come off there? So that's, that's the starting of the pyrolysis. This, like a little Altoids container, just a little tin container. And, but it's, it's, it's burning off the organic material, what they call volatiles. Some of that's steam. It's just basically smoking now in a not totally sealed up environment, but it's, it's pretty close. It's pretty tight. And so that's the beginning of the hope We don't have a, you don't see any smoke detectors, smoke detectors in here? Is there? Oh, yeah, well, if it gets out of control, somebody run over there and pull that down, okay? <laughs> I don't think, as much dust as there is in this place, I don't think it's gonna go off, so. If it does, if it does, uh, we get a shower. Free, free shower. <laughs> so, so that's so that's making right now. So when you uh, when you grind this up, you don't want. I personally don't want mine to be ground into powder. The thing about having it ground into that small of a particle is that it's hard to keep track of, and it's so light, it can actually be washed away. When I get done making mine, I put it in a pile, I leave it big, it gets rained on, it's underneath the tree, the acorns fall on it, the chickens scratch through it, so it's it's getting some actual, some nitrogen from the rainwater. That's getting a little bit out of control compared to what it usually does. <laughs> I think it'll be okay, it's going to make a little quicker than 45 minutes. Is that? Does that smell bother anybody? Mm -hmm. can, you, can you really tell it? It's pretty strong down here. <laughs> so you've got to be careful with the dust from that when you crush it up. That's what I'm trying to say with that. And then why, why, would we, why would we do it? I mean... Now, will that smoke light off there? It, it might. It might. We'll see here in a minute because it's kind of coming around. Mm -hmm. There's a little bit of a rim around that. And uh, I might just pass these around to almost see what happens when it, it actually, it, it will, if you don't want to get your hands dirty, don't, you, don't handle that, but you can see what it turns into. You've used the word both crush and grind for, for making that. Do we right. crush it or grind it? Well, either one. Okay. But I, I don't get mine to a fine powder. Okay. I like, when I, when I put it in my compost pile and I turn it over, I like to see I like to see what's pencil getting shading. off. Yeah, good. Like a pencil shading, something like that? Yeah, it's small smoke. It's a uh, quarter, quarter inch down to eight, okay. is the way I like to have mine. And I've got some out here. Uh, we've got the leather booth out here if you want to see some, uh, the way I do it. I, I throw mine through a wood chipper. And oh. since it's wet, it, uh, there's no dust involved in it. I, I it chips up just as fast as I can throw it, shove it in there. So uh, that's a good way to do it. And then I, I I put this grinder together over here, and what that is is a it's a rod with chain all the way down through there. So I I take it, pour it in the top, put a drill on the end of it, maybe I strap it off to a a post or a tree and then I pour it in the top and 
that chain, those chains run all the way down that length of, of pipe. And uh, when it comes out the bottom, it's, it beats it up. So, and you can make one of those grinders for like $100. So that's a pretty good way to do it. When you have, when you have a garden, when you, when you compost, those microbes, we kind of got a homeless problem. Our, our microbes don't have, have homes a lot of times. We, we put, put out uh, compost, and the compost is doing a really good job, but those microbes a lot of times don't have a place to live. And that's one of the good things about charcoal is that it gives those microbes and gives, it, it's super absorbent. So it gives those microbes a place to go. It gives them homes, basically. So we build our soil, uh, and it takes it takes time. I don't know where y'all live, but where I live in Tennessee, it's nothing but clay. And what's not clay is rock. So we try to break rock up just to have soil a lot of times. Sure. We got we have to build if we want a, if we want a good place to to garden and farm. We we have to build that soil, and so. We, we want to put those microbes in there. But when they get in there, they have to have a place. They have to have something to eat. They have to have some place to live, uh, to survive and to do well. And that's where charcoal comes in. Yes, sir. Does it have any effect on the resident earthworms? Uh, it probably has an, an effect, but not detrimental. You can put, you can put that charcoal straight into straight into your compost, straight into your worm bin, and then as you filter your worms out, that worm, cat, those castings from the worms, they start inoculating that charcoal and uh, just moving right on through. And the, I don't do worms much, but the guys that's supposed to know about, a lot about worms said that they will actually absorb some of that, they will actually eat some of that charcoal, and as it passes through, Yep, it's in the castings already. Yes, sir. I noticed you've got flame coming out of the top of your Altoids tin. Is that almost working like a gasifier? Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. and it's, a, it's gassing now, and that flame from the underneath has lit that gas on fire. So That's most of the... Smoke's gone away because of... Most of the uh, vapors, most of the water is out of that material now. It's, it was pretty dry. There wasn't much moisture in there, so... If, when that flame goes out, we'll leave it just a little bit longer, and then I'll, I'll quench it, and we'll see, see what, what it looks like. So, uh, Bruce, is that methane that it's driving off? It's just volatile gases. It kind of depends on what you have in there. Wood, uh, the wood gases are different than, than your, like if you were burning manure or something like that, and bone would even be different. But I, I don't know the chemical makeup of it. I know that in the Orient, when they make their charcoal, they don't waste anything. When that, they have a pipe coming out, and when it exhausts, they cool it, it condenses that smoke, and that smoke drips down into a bottle, and they take that, basically wood oil, and they come back next time and they burn it as fuel. So it's there's a lot of there's a lot of waste there, I suppose. We could use the heat for a lot of different things, and there's a lot of stuff that goes that we don't really use. And when you do it this way. So well that that comes to the part of how do you do it? And you don't need anything like this. I've got probably five or six different methods and ways that I, and the best that I've found is just a half barrel and put my material in there and just keep layering it, and layering it, and layering it. You can do it in a, in a hole in the ground. You so don't even have to have top open of the half barrel? I'll, I'll top open on half barrel. Like yes, you sir. got there. Yeah, like this, this is, 
This is just a barrel with the top open for longer material. That's, the, and I got this idea from a guy in Australia. And uh, just, you don't have to get your material so small. And uh, just start a fire in the bottom of it, get a good bed of coals, put your material on. When you, it starts turning the ash kind of around the edges, and you can see ash, put some more on. Tell it. You see ash coming again? Put some more on. What you're trying to do is the concept is you want wherever you're burning, you want flame all the way around. And I try to I try to come up as I'm burning evenly. So that flame is even all the way around. They call it the flame cap. And what that does is that starves everything below material you just put in, it starves it for oxygen. So now that material below is not turning to ash, it's turning to charcoal. Right, and that's what you want. So the least amount of smoke that you can get when you put that new material on the bed. And what I do, I keep a leaf blower right close and I throw that new material in. I put that leaf blower on there until it's got a good flame, and then I let it go. The faster you can get that flame going, the better off you are. And it doesn't matter whether you're burning in a, a hole in the ground or right on top of a table. His question was, can you put something heavy on top of that material uh, to, to compress it to keep air pockets from inside? If you have that flame cap, there's no air down there. There's no air. It's, if you have holes in your barrel, there would be, but I, the ones I use don't have a, the barrels contained, and the only way air can get in there is from the top. Now, there is another method that Is it better yes. Now, this, I'll just go over these as I <clears throat> as I get the questions. This this barrel, this is better around. This big pipe goes all the way through. Inside here is another pipe that doesn't penetrate the top, but it goes through the bottom. So you put your material in here, put this up on blocks. You put a big fire underneath it. This, this becomes like a rocket stove. This is, this is what helps keep the, the middle of your, of your mass, whatever you're burning in there. The smaller pipe is releasing the gases like that you saw here a minute ago. Those gases are going back down into the fire that you have built under here, and it's actually fueling your fire. So you're not wasting everything that's coming out of there. You're actually fueling. It's a circular motion of, of energy. So that, that's how this one works. And then you seal this up the best you can on the top. This one actually works a little bit better. It works lay down horizontal with the fire all the way the whole length of the barrel. And then it has two barrels that go all the way through, or pipes that go all the way through. And one pipe that comes out from the bottom. This works especially well with smaller material because the, the heat gets, uh, gets into the middle of the mass much better than in this barrel. It takes a little bit longer and you can't pack your material as tight. This would never burn sawdust. woven in there so there was some space. So those two are, those, those two, I've, I've burned both of those and they both, they both make charcoal, okay? What is the maximum diameter log that you can put in there or stick? Okay, that's a good question. I don't guess there'd be a maximum size. 
but the thicker it is and the bigger it is, the longer it takes to burn all the way through it or carbonize all the way through. And that brings me to the point of, I try to have very similar size material. I start with a smaller material. I can get a little bit bigger as I, as I get my mass of coals because I have more heat. And then when I, when I finish, even smaller material yet again because you have it's a it burns quicker and turns to charcoal quicker and keeps that flame cap on the top. So yes sir. What what's that make what material made of? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, you can use any anything that has carbon. Anything that has carbon can be turned into charcoal. I figured that might be helpful. Yeah, yeah. If you had, if you if you have a litter box, and I don't know what a lot of that litter is made of. Most of it's organic stuff, isn't it? Clay. 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 Yeah. 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 It'll it'll carbonize it. Moisture is, a, is an issue. I say it's an issue. It's not a, the drier your material is, the better and faster it will carbonize because you're, you'll have to use less energy to burn those, to burn those liquids off. So, or you can put a cat in there. Just a joke, just a joke. All right. So there's lots of lots of ways. Uh, you just like I say, just dig a pit in the ground if you don't want to build one of these. Just make it kind of conical, cheap upside down cone. Put your material in there. When you get done, quench it with water. Done. Anybody can do it. Uh, one of the good ways, one of the really good ways, is to have a barrel this size with a smaller barrel inside, put, put the material inside the, the barrel, turn it upside down, so you, now you have a barrel full of wood, put wood around the, in between the two barrels, catch it on fire, and just walk away basically. My, the way that I do mine has to be tended. You gotta go back every 30, 40 minutes and put more material on there. Which doesn't bother me because I'm right there. So the, the barrel on the inside of that is it sealed? Or does it have another little? Pretty well sealed, okay. but not a hundred percent. So you, st you still got to have exhaust, otherwise it's gonna. Right. Yeah. You got to be up. You got to have a place for the gas for the gas to get out. And and, I, and I'll caution you about this. And I, I have this in my notes, and this is real important because the real important stuff I put on my notes in big letters. So. Never seal, never 100% seal anything. And you can take a, you can take a stainless steel pan, put the lid on it, put your wood in there, put it in your fireplace, absolutely passive. The gas will come off, it'll ignite. There's a fella, y'all familiar with Jack Spearco? He's got a brand that made pipe vessels just for this purpose. Heavy wall pipe, screw the lid on, one or two little holes, put it in your fireplace. Maybe you have to burn it two or three times. Maybe your fireplace or your wood stove burns two or three times, but eventually you've got, a, you've got charcoal. So that's another good way to do it. But really do not seal that thing up because if you do, you basically got a pipe bomb. So <laughs> that's something you need to think about. Uh, any other questions on that? Yes, ma'am. So we had a whole bunch of wood donated to us, and we're not completely sure of the. I'm sorry. I... I... No, I... we had a whole bunch of wood that uh, given to us, and we're not exactly sure of the treated part. For, you know what I mean? Is it one of those things where if you're just wanting to use this for your compost and making biochar with it, and you're not sure if it's treated, can you still do it? It, or is it just don't do it and, and, and take I, I, There's 
so much wood in the world, I just wouldn't fool and treat it wood. Okay. Or, 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 or painted. Oh, yeah. Or there's just so much other good, clean wood. Okay. Uh, and plus, there's a lot more moisture in that because they, they actually force that tree stuff through water and they penetrate that wood with it. So no telling you know, how long it takes for it to really dry completely through. Okay. So, yeah, that's a good question. Yes, sir. Yeah, really good question. And that, that makes really good charcoal because it, the drier it is and the more porosity that is in there, the faster it turns into charcoal. Yep, that's a really good, and all that pulpy wood that you, you know, you, you cut it, you, you didn't use it for two years and it kind of went to pieces because it wasn't a hard wood. Those are all, those are all perfectly good. All right, anything else? Here. The best way to put a barrel in a barrel? Yeah. I don't know what many gallons it is. Uh, I think those are 30 gallon, a 30 and a 50. Yeah, 30 or 35 and a 55. In a, in a 55, 35 and a 50. And, and you would put holes in the bottom. Well, you don't even have to raise it up. It just has to be not completely sealed. And well, you, I mean, if, if you've got two overhead drums, then are you going to want to put a pipe through both? Not through, not through the inner. Your inner barrel, the barrel that you want to make charcoal in, yeah. it needs to be low or no oxygen. So you wouldn't want to put a something through it unless you could unless you could weld it off and seal it you could get more heat through putting a putting a piece of pipe through that center but most of the time there's enough wood around that edge to, to carbonize whatever's inside and I'll tell you somebody that you and he was here last last time uh, Eric Johnson with he has a channel called Porterhouse and Teal. And he's an excellent, he's super smart. And he's got some excellent videos on that method and that's what he uses it. And I would use that method if I could ever find a good smaller barrel. They're just really hard to come by. And when I find them, they want 150 bucks for them. So, you know, I just I just haven't done it. But he, he somehow, he he's really good. And then if you want to take somebody else's name down, I don't know the fella's name, I don't, I've seen a lot of his videos, he never says his name, but his channel is called Skill Cult. C-L-U-T, Skill Cult. And he makes a lot of good charcoal. Well, there's lots of guys out there, but I like these guys because <clears throat> I like to keep it as simple as possible. It's very easy. Everybody should do it. If you've got a, if you, if you, if you care enough to make compost, you ought to have some charcoal in there. It just can't, there's no way you can go wrong with it. Okay, I guess that's what I'm saying. What do you do with your ash if you get the charcoal? The ash that you can burn, you use the charcoal wood with it. I put some of it in my garden, but I leave it out. That's not it. I scattered it, I scatter mine in my garden, leave it all winter. So, and when I, when I quench mine, when I've got my half barrel completely full of charcoal, when I quench that, I quench it with clean water. What I mean by clean is not city. It's either rain water or pond water. And when I first started, I thought, oh yeah, there'll be lots of good microbes in that pond water. That'll be super good. And then I got to thinking, well, that water's steaming <laughs> when, I, when I pour it on that charcoal. And it does fracture the charcoal some, but I'm pretty sure everything that was living in there is dead, but it is clean clean water, what I mean by clean, no chemicals, so. Yes, sir. Go ahead. 
what is your distribution rate when you put it on the garden? <clears throat> well, she got to the question, well, what is the, how much do you use? And that's totally subjective. I've got lots of it, so I put lots of it out. I've got two compost piles now that are 10 to 15 yards each. And I turn, I turn them with a front end loader. When I, so I've got, in each one of those, I've probably got a bucket full, a, a whole bucket of, you know, one yard in each one of those. One to six, one to seven. Uh, over 40% charcoal, and you start topping out. Don't forget, you, charcoal's not a silver bullet. It's not gonna solve every problem. It's gonna help every problem, but it's not gonna completely solve it. You still have to put, you still have to put organic matter in your, in your compost, into your soil. All this does is helps you sustain that just a little bit longer. So July, August, if around me, super dry. I've got that charcoal and it's a bit of absorbing water all summer long, every time it rains. And now I've got in my garden, uh, so much water that my microbes probably aren't gonna even realize that we're going through a dry spell. Hmm. I've got one more question. Do you have to quench it or can you let it just cool by natural respiration? Okay, that's a good question. He, the question was, do you have to quench it? Well, if you do, if you don't quench it, what's it gonna keep doing? It's gonna turn into ash. So I quench mine. And you gotta be careful when you like when I burn mine, I burn four half barrels all at once. Right on the other side of it is where I store my charcoal. I leave that I leave that charcoal in those barrels after I quench it till I till I burn it again, which could be a week or maybe two weeks. Do you have any drain holes in the bottom? No holes. If you if you don't if you leave one ember one ember, it'll keep going. And I had the first instance of that. My last burn, I didn't have quite enough water. I put a bucket and a half, probably six to eight gallons in each one of those. Well, normally I fill them up all the way to the top, so they're it's completely immersed in water. But I don't want. I don't, but I, I came back the next morning. I only had a few buckets, and there was a little bit of ember in there, and it, it through the night, and I could see where it, it turned to ash on one side. So it's, it's worth being careful with. You, you started out by saying all biochar is charcoal, but not all charcoal is biochar. Right. What's the difference? What I mean by that, what I meant by that statement was charcoal in and of itself is not biochar. But what is biochar? Biochar, it turns into biochar once you inoculate it. And once you start putting microbes in it, you might you might use a compost tea. I, the, the best and easiest way for me to inoculate mine is, and I put a shovel full in my chicken yard every few couple of weeks, but I put it in my chicken house and I do the layer method. Did anybody else do the layer, deep layer method? I didn't realize that that was a thing. I thought it was just me being lazy for years, <laughs> you know. Just put some clean stuff on top, just put some clean stuff. So there's, there's sod or chips, um, charcoal, hay or, hay or straw, and then, you know, that's how I layer mine. Then I'm, I'm about due to clean it out right now. So that's already being inoculated. What I mean by that is it's not raw. It's got chicken manure and whatever else is in there. All right? Good question. I have another question for you. As far as biochar, Correct me if I'm wrong, anybody does aquaponics. The, there's a filter that that water is pumped through and then put back into the pond, and it has to go through that biochar. Can that charcoal then be put into a pond, and let's say a crate, to absorb all that algae and whatnot, and then be utilized in aquaponics? Yes. Yeah. I'm, I, 
when I get a big scum on the top of my pond, I throw that, I get it pretty, pretty fine, and I just cast it, and pretty soon that water's clearing up. It, it can't hurt you. I mean, the, every emergency room in America has, has charcoal in it before. So it's going it's gonna they give it to you, make you eat it, however. Now it is activated. It, what they mean by activated is it's super clean with uh, steam. It's, you know, medical, medical grade. And I've eaten mine. You could eat this and it wouldn't hurt you a bit. It might help you. All right, any other questions? I don't even know. Am I out of time? No. Got to Still got a little minutes. time. Uh, so, I really don't have a whole lot else to say other than uh, you do have, don't, don't forget to charge it. Don't just throw it out in your garden and expect it to be a miracle. That's, it's got to be charged. Uh, I like to tell people it's, it's a wise, it's a wise person, it's a wise man or, or lady that builds homes for their microbes uh, in their garden for, you know, little people they can't even see. You know, microbes are, I've never seen one. I've just trusted some scientist. Uh, I've seen them in a microscope, but those, uh, those, those microbes are, they're there and they're there to help us. And we're, we're farming microbes. Yes, Is there another way to charge the biochar other than in a chicken coop? Other than what? A chicken coop? Yes. Chicken yeah, you can charge it. Um, you can put, you can make a compost tea. You can, you can, okay. you. you can buy, uh, materials online, organic materials. You can, you can buy mycorrhizal fungi. Uh, you, can, you can buy any number of things. You can, you can make compost from manure. Uh, I mean, tea from manure and just put, put your... That's what I needed to know. Thank you. Right. Uh, Mr. enough of this um, making your own charcoal million and one uses there you go use your left hand can't see what he's doing is just pouring water all over that container to cool it down. Trying not to get burnt. Nancy. He said I'm trying not to get burnt. There you go. And there he is. Okay. Made charcoal. Yeah, there's, there's a few pieces that are not completely burned. And if you have that at home, don't worry about it. It's uh, just put it in your next burn if you got some chunks. Now, I got I got a quick look at your match. Everybody, Everybody got, got your match? The matches that you passed around at the beginning. You didn't get one. You didn't get one. Here I got it. Look at the not the light, not the end you light, but the other end. Is yours blue? Look at the end. We got a lady over here going through the box looking for a blue ended match. <laughs> does, it, it, does it look like it's been covered? Yeah. Somebody got it. Anybody? Got well, there's that leftover matches. Maybe okay. nobody got no, it. No, because I'm looking. Blue was not on. Oh. 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 You can Let's see. Tammy. Oh. Yep, we got it. Right here. Okay. Okay. This, this was this was the match that, I, that he was looking for. 
and it had the blue on it. So you come by my come by my booth out there, and I got a bag of charcoal for you. Look at that. Bag of and the rest of you got no excuse. You got a match. And I know you got wood <laughs> at your place. I hate some charcoal. Get out there and start something on fire. <laughs> Not at the neighbor's place. All right, yes, you are good at that. Um, before you guys break up and leave, just a, an announcement that right now, this was supposed to be Bill Stormfeather, but if you weren't here at the beginning,